So as you heard the voice of God say, my name is Dan Shundoff, and I'm the CEO of a company uh, that I'm very proud of to be part of uh, out of Kearney, Nebraska. Uh, 17 years ago, it was one guy um, out of his house working two night jobs, 10 customers, had a haircut like Blake's. Uh, that's kind of taken care of itself over time, quite frankly, so. Uh, <laughs> Not that it'll happen to you, but you know. Uh, and, and, and today we're, we're a company of, of 26 uh, really talented IT professionals. And to sort of put, put it in context, uh, we're an outsourced IT department, and so lots of you have IT people in your own organizations, and we do that on an outsourced basis. Today, if you, if you took the customer base and wrapped it up and, and looked it at it, holistically. Um, it, would, it would be an organization of several thousand employees, um, hundreds of locations in roughly 27 states, and industries ranging from healthcare to manufacturing to agriculture to professional services and construction management, and revenues would exceed a billion dollars. And so that's a, our group, we tend to always think we're small, but you know, we have a serious impact in a, in a really special place out in central Nebraska. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about some things that occurred for us as we went through the EAS, EAS program with Gallup and uh, the leadership from Glenn and Charles, who also inspired my new haircut, by the way. If you know them, you'll understand that. I'm going to tell you about three things, uh, and then I'm going to wrap it up sort of explaining what the overall impact of those th three things were. So similar to some of the other stories you heard, uh, every single organization went through the Strengths Finder exercise for their leadership team. And for us, it was the six people that you see here. And it's really not about the specifics of the, the content on there. For, for me, it was trying to understand, we're, we're, we're not young in terms of age, but we're really, uh, untested in terms of growing our company exponentially. And so we were pretty good at sort of plodding along 10, 12, 15% growth year over year. We had a couple of really big spikes, but you know, we haven't done this before. We haven't grown to 30 to 50 to set, you know, wh whatever it might take us. And so uh, I had some concerns that I didn't have really good clarity in the strengths uh, of our management team. So we went through this exercise uh, it became pretty evident that we have a very strong, uh, very broad skill sets, great strengths, also complementary. And so when you look at this in the, in the four key categories of, of strengths around uh, executive management, um, you can see that executing, influencing relationships and strate strategic building or strategic thinking were pretty well covered. Uh, four of the six in most areas, five of the six, and six of the six in the other two. So that, that really gave me a, a tremendous boost in confidence that it's okay to think outside the box and challenge this team in a different way than we have in the past. I'm not sure, so sure they were very comfortable with it, but I was very comfortable with it. The other thing that, uh, and I totally lifted this out of the Gallup content, I hope that's not a, I don't know if that's not a plagiaristic type problem, but uh, so, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about customer engagement or employee engagement and the impact that has and the power of the customer relationship. Um, and that is absolutely true. Um, there's a one-to-one -one relationship there that if you can continually improve that by having engaged employees, highly motivated, highly engaged, ready to roll, high energy, uh, that it will create a, a stronger customer relationship. They buy more, uh, they spend more, and they'll pay more margin. And that's, that's just the, the behavioral economic uh, impact of an em engaged employee. But there was something else that I took out of the book. after I read the, the, the Jim Clifton's book, The Coming Jobs War, and there was one piece in there that I thought I'd share with you here that I thought was really, uh, really impressed me is that the, one, the employee uh, customer engagement is a one-to-one -one relationship. And the real, the real magic here is the exponential impact that the manager has. So all up, on average, you might say that a, a manager uh, has eight to 10 employees. Jim Clifton's data uh, is 
one in five of those managers, and these are his words, dangerously lousy. Uh, I could think of lots of other words, but we'll stick with the dangerously lousy. And so that really, in, in, you have to make a change there. You cannot, that just is stifling so much of the potential of organic growth within your organization. So think about that. It's not a personal thing. Sometimes you just got to get someone into a different position and they will, you know, really fire up. But if you've got a challenge within a managerial or supervisory role, it's going to have an ex exponential impact in a negative way also down into the rest of your employees. So you really got to, you really got to make some time and, and get that right. So when you do get that right, and this is a little repetitive in terms of impact, but you know, I just got to share the, the quantitative stuff. You know, when you get it right, this slide really is intended to show the, the net impact from Q1 over Q4, 210, uh, and then Q2 over Q1 and 211. And we experienced uh, revenue growth uh, of in excess of 20% within the one quarter, and that translated into more than 70% growth in profit. That's that's just because we got better at what we were doing. We got more efficient, more effective, and uh, we had better clarity on what it is that we were doing and what we were good at. And so those are the three things, the, the strengths, the uh, economic engine with the employee and the manager and the customer, and you know, where the exponential impact can take you in terms of, of revenue and profit. So this is, this is what it meant for us as we look to the future. And uh, put a lot of time and energy into this over the last uh, three or four months. And quite frankly, we actually, it, it was so transformational, we, we sort of paused our growth plans for Q3 and Q4 and just decided to sustain where we were because we needed to spend a lot of time talking about 2012 and 2013. Uh, because when we built the plan for 11, we did, had not fully completed the EAS program. And so it really made us stop and think a little bit. So hopefully this isn't too confusing, but I've got revenue on the left, employee count on the right, and time along the bottom. And I said this before, I think, when I showed this slide. I took the zeros off the revenue. You can imagine for yourself how many there may or may not be. <laughs> <clears throat> if, you, uh, if you think there are seven or eight or more zeros, uh, I'll leave you my card and we can talk if you're interested in owning a company in central Nebraska. But so we've done pretty well. You know, we've modified our strategy, we've made incremental improvements, we've automated, we've got efficient, we've invested in technology, we've trained our people, all the real basic things that drive performance within an organization. And it had incremental performance, right? It really took us to a, a relatively good spot uh, in 2010. This is through the recession, remember. And, Spending was down, but our customers continued to, to do well and thrive, and, and we were lucky enough to be part of that experience with them. And in 2011, um, we had another good year, and we feel that we're at a spot now where we're about to burst and really push through. So all the stuff we learned about our management team through the ES program was, was significant in how we start to build the plan. So in, uh, I'd say, September, uh, September, October time frame, sat down with my management team and uh, we said, what's, what's possible? And we decided to take our five-year plan at that 5, 10, 15 percent incremental growth and accelerate it to a two-year plan. Built the budget, we got the hiring plans in place, the recruiting, we're going to have to add lots of people and customers and we're going to have to really get at it. But the beauty is that it, it really just transforms our performance as an organization. No massive new products, no new brick and mortar, no new market you know, acquisition or mergers or anything like that. Just getting really good at what it is that we're good at. And so minus uh, our experience with the Gallup program, the support of the university, DED and the Omaha Chamber, uh, our, our mentor, Sean Kasky, Glenn and Charles and Todd and Ty and the rest of the team, this, this would take us five years instead of two. 
And uh, when, when Jim was talking about how imperative it is to go out today and start creating jobs, I'm, I'm excited to be able to be part of that. So thank you very much, and uh, hope you have a good rest of the day.